Folks, I um, I have a home. It's in it's north of Georgetown. <coughs> right in front of my house, I've got a garden. Uh, now, how many of us have a green thumb? Raise our hand. I try. Well, I don't have one either. <laughs> and what do you think has happened to a lot of my plants? They've oh. wilted. Which I've tried actually as best I can. I go out and yesterday I was pulling up the weeds and tending the garden. Um, but still, some of them are dying, you know. I'm not great with watering them every day. I get home and I find an excuse. It's easy to find an excuse, isn't it? Yeah. Now, how many of us know what we're doing when we do this when the gospel is being read? The cross here, the cross here, the cross here. Sister Maria, what does it mean? May the gospel live in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's exactly what it means. And in our second reading today, we hear of how we have to tend the garden or the fruit in our hearts when it comes to God's message. We have to tend it, take care of it. And when we do this at church, we're recommitting ourselves to tending that garden. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's a difficult thing to do. In Deuteronomy, we read of how Moses tells the people, things are going to get tough. You're going to want to push off this or that commandment because it's too easy to do that because they're too hard to do. And Jesus, in today's gospel, is confronted by people saying, you're not doing the letter of the law. You're not washing your hands and engaging in ritual purity. <coughs> but jumping back to James today, what does he say pure religion is? Tending to the orphan and the widow. Taking care of people. It's too easy to focus on the easy stuff. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to wash your hands before you eat? Not that hard. I mean, we forget. But that's not what's hard. What's hard is sitting at the table with the people you're told aren't ritually pure. And what did it mean to be ritually pure in Jesus' day? Well, it meant to be the people on the margins. <clears throat> the people that were ritually pure were the ones that it was easy to afford enough water to wash your hands. Water wasn't cheap and it wasn't easy to get. It was easy for the wealthy people to attend the synagogue as often as they needed and to not work on the Sabbath. Why did Peter work on the Sabbath, we read in the scripture? Well, he says it was because he needed to go out and fish. But why did he need to go out and fish? Because he needed money to feed his family. He needed money to feed his family. And Jesus is seeing all of these people being cast aside and says, you're the one that's being a hypocrite. He's to the, to the people telling them, why are you sitting at this table? Right? The Pharisees come and say, Jesus, what are you doing with all these people that are unpure? Why haven't you done the letter of the law? And he says, because I'm doing the spirit. I'm doing the truth of the law. James tells us again, pure religion is what? Tending to the widow and the orphan. And now folks, it's not easy to be what Jesus tells us to be, is it? It's not easy to go out and minister to the people who are unclean. We don't use that language anymore, but we use that meaning. We use that meaning. How many of us avert our gaze when we see a person experiencing homelessness? Mm -hmm. How many of us avert our gaze when we see somebody experiencing a mental health crisis? How many of us avert our gaze when we think about the elderly in our community and how we don't visit them enough. These are things that are far too challenging and we instead focus on the stuff that is easy. We come to mass, which is a beautiful thing, but when we do this, on my mind, 
on my lips and in my heart, the gospel being there. The gospel says that we're supposed to tend to those people. And I'm not telling you you have to be perfect, but I'm telling you to make that commitment. I'm encouraging you to find time in your life to do one thing. Jesus says the most important commandments that the entirety of the law can be summarized in two statements. To love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your spirit and to love your neighbor as yourself. And folks, when we see things like our transgender brothers and sisters being put on a list by our government in Texas, we see how that's not being made manifest in the world. And so it's our responsibility as Christians to advocate for the people experiencing marginalization. Our garden doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not. Some of them are dying. But my garden exists. If I just completely went absent and never came outside to tend to it, all of the plants would die in it. But it's my commitment to keep trying that keeps it alive. And I'm, again, I'm not telling you you've got to be a gardener. You don't have to develop a green thumb. But let's tend our spirits. Jesus says what defiles you is not what you put in your mouth. It's not these um, restrictions in the law based on what you eat and what you wear and what you, what you, uh, uh, who you hang out with. Instead, it's what you put out into the world. And so if we tend the gospel, if we tend the gospel in our hearts by engaging in prayer, by doing kind things, and by talking to people that we love, we'll see the fruits in the world. Amen? Amen. Let's do it this week. Amen? Amen. Amen.